Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, I'm in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And this is, well, I think it's one of the best culture and food destinations in the world. I love Ethiopian food. And today, I'm gonna go on a tour with Go Addis. Uh, they specialize in off the beaten path tours and especially food-based tours. We're gonna go on an ultimate Ethiopian food tour of Addis Ababa. And we're gonna go to a market, we're gonna eat some incredibly, some of the best Ethiopian food, and I'm gonna share it all with you in this video right now. Good morning, it's 5.30 a.m. We're starting this ultimate Ethiopian food tour right now and we're on our way to the market first. Thank you. Hey, what's Hi. up, man? Good morning. By the way, this morning I'm hanging out with Barhano and he's with Go Addis. He's gonna be taking me around the market this morning. That's good. All right, yeah. let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Driving through Addis right now, you can see that the city is very quiet. The city is just waking up, but when you get to this section of Mercato, it is already buzzing. Burr has told me that it opens at 3 a.m., right? 3, starts, 3, 2, 3. And this is where people come to buy wholesale vegetables, fruits and vegetables. Uh, so the trucks come in from the countryside, they bring the fresh vegetables, and then uh, individual shopkeepers from around Addis would come here to shop to buy things and resell them back at their small shops uh, in the neighborhoods of Addis and throughout Addis. Okay. Oh, oh. oh sorry, man. Salam. You gotta be careful walking around. They, these guys carry some massive loads on their head, shoulders, uh, giant baskets of onions and just gunny sacks of potatoes, 100 kilos. Salam, salam. Hey, this me. This carrot. Okay. How are you? Okay. How many kilos is that? <laughs> Heavy load, that's like a hundred kgs of mangoes on his head. Every meal, when we cook, there is onions. Onions are hugely important in Ethiopian food, used in almost every dish, um, and often simmered down into sauces, but there's just masses of onions, and you gotta be careful not to get knocked out by an onion bag. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> wow. Some serious energy. Wow. Thank you. We just asked one of the guys how heavy his bag was full of onions. He said 150 kilos. That's like 300 and some pounds. So much respect for them. They're so hardworking, but that is why you do not want to get knocked out by a bag of potatoes or onions. The sun is beginning to fully make its appearance. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> Ready for a coffee? Yes. The rest of Addis Ababa is beginning to wake up this morning, uh, but we just, we literally walked for about 30 minutes and we're still, you can still see parts of the market. It's, it's just sprawling, it's gigantic. <laughs> We are in Tomoka, the oldest coffee shop in Addis, 1953 established. 1953. 1953. You pay at the register up front and then you come with your chip back here to the, the espresso so, machines. Every chip they have the different colors. Uh -huh. And that's the if difference? Is, yeah, if it is macchiato, it would be black. Okay. Is, One of the popular styles of coffee is a macchiato yeah. in Ethiopia. And it is, uh, yeah, you, you're gonna love it. <laughs> we both got macchiatos, uh, but there's two different types of macchiatos. This is a macchiato black. This is a macchiato. More white. More white. So <laughs> it's a difference between milk, your preference of how much milk you want yeah, and how strong, strong you want. Yeah. Okay, so should I stir mine though? If you wanted to mix, you can mix it. Mix yeah, it or either way. Yeah, okay, maybe I, maybe I should mix mine real fast. Yeah. So you can kind of mix that around, get those layers going. Oh, that is uh, just beautiful. Oh, 
Yes. So that is really strong. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It has that perfect like coffee bitterness to it. It is kind of nutty tasting, just slightly cut with that milk foam to, to, to break the bitterness. Yeah, if dodging those giant gunny sacks or getting hit in the head by a giant gunny sack of onions didn't wake you up, this will definitely wake you up. Oh, I love it. My eyes have opened. Macchiato was incredibly good, and you can also come here to buy some beans, coffee beans, roasted Ethiopian coffee beans. I bought a couple bags, uh, I wasn't gonna leave without them. Where are we heading next? To Mercado, like that it's different sections. Ah, okay. Uh, especially in Minalish Terra, which means what do you have section. Ah, okay. It's more recycled, coffee section. <laughs> There are more than 10,000 shops in, in wow. Mercado. And, and those are just official shops. You can probably, there's probably a lot more unofficial yeah, unofficial, shops, right? Yeah. Mercato in Addis Ababa is one of the largest, if not the largest, biggest open air market in all of Africa. Spice section. Okay. And the main spice in Ethiopia is called Burberry. Burberry. Burberry is like a blend of more than 13 different spices normally, but the complex mix is 22. And then every family, every family, they make their own spice. For sure, the reason why I personally love Ethiopian food so much and why I consider it to be one of the best foods, cuisines in the world is because of the blend of spices that goes into Ethiopian cooking. And so the main spice mix is called Berbere, uh, which is a mix of spices that is what makes Ethiopian food so flavorful. Salam, salam. Okay. Salam, salam. 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 Dude, this is the biggest bag of dried chilies or chilies maybe I've ever seen in my life. This is like a swimming pool of dried chilies. Like you could you could dive into this. So turf is the smallest grain in the world. Like we just super fine. It's like sand. You can try it. Like you can touch it. How it's very fine, just like a sand. The smallest grain in the world it is teff. It grows in the highlands of Ethiopia. We're just taking a look at some teff, which is the grain that. Uh, they used to make injera, which is the most important. It's the staple food of Ethiopia. You eat it with everything. Uh, so this is the most important, one of the most important foods, grains in all of Ethiopia. This is ru, R-U-E. So it's, it's a kind of like a traditional medicine in Ethiopia. And then this is ru, sweet basil, and, and... You can smell the rosemary too. Oh. Barrels and rebar and old car parts and uh, metal scraps, they're all used for uh, creating things. So every everything is recycled. We're heading out of Mercato. That was incredible, so fascinating to see. Uh, people are also really friendly and now we're on our way to eat breakfast. Stopping for breakfast at a restaurant, it's called, you pronounce it Katenya. Katenya. Uh, this is a very well known restaurant, and I think there's quite a few different branches of this restaurant within Addis. Uh, but they, yeah, their food is top quality, really good. So we're starting off with something called Chechebsa. It's like a flatbread, but like a thin pancake, and then it's like shredded into pieces. And then they stir fry it, kind of mix it with the berbere, which is the, the seasoning uh, spice mixture. Uh, but then you mix it, before you eat it, you add honey. Mm. Oh, that honey, that is quite a contrast of flavors because you've got that slightly spicy berbere mix uh, seasoning but then it's coated in the honey. We also got the special fool, and fool are fava beans, um, and they're at the bottom, but you wouldn't even know the bowl contains this. This is the special fool, so there are all sorts of toppings on top of the beans. Grab a little bit of everything. Oh, mm. oh that is awesomely good. Mm. You can taste the spice mixture, the beans below, the onions, the, the fresh tomatoes. This 
this is the roux that we saw at the market. Uh, but first I'll just taste the coffee first and then you can dip it in there. It just, it just never gets old and you can never have enough. You just dip, dip it inside. Okay, I'm gonna go in for the roux. And you just kind of dip it in. Oh, and immediately you can smell that aroma coming out, like that lemony aroma coming out. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that gives it a, a little bit of a different fragrance. It does, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't like, uh, it complements the coffee is what it does. Oh, okay, oh. this is where I meet up with the, the, yeah. Desi, okay. Desi. That was so much fun. Thank you for taking me around. Thank you very much. That was I the sunrise market. Yeah, that was uh, seeing the market, being able to uh, see where all the, the ingredients come from. Yeah. And then now we're going to eat a lot more Ethiopian food today. Uh, but then I'm going to uh, meet up with Desi, who is another guide. But Bray, thank you very much. That's been awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Okay. Hey, what's up? Um, we just met up with Desi. Hi. From Go Ades. <laughs> and he's gonna take me around. This is where we're gonna really begin to eat a lot of Ethiopian food. So we drove over to Shola Market. The name came from the fig trees. Shola meaning ah, fig trees in Amharic. Very nice. This is the cucumber. She oh, that's the butter, okay. The mm -hmm. Those mountains drink the grow coffee because of the soil type and the climate, the flavor of the coffee. Like wild. Fully organic, wild, yeah. Wild coffee. Yeah. Every family in Ethiopia, they buy green beans, they roast them themselves, they grind them themselves and drink it. Uh, but coffee is such a, it's an integral part of Ethiopian culture. Wild forest. So I got a kilo of Yurgashefe, which is a very well-known region, as well as a kilo of wild coffee. Then we cut into For coffee. This is the woo. It smells so good. Nice. We're just walking through the clothing section, um, and one of Desi's friends has just invited us to sit down and have a coffee. It's kind of red almost, right? Yeah. It's salt. This is something that I've never tried before coffee with salt. And it's, it's pretty common to have? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, that like brings out, just like salt does, it brings out the flavor of whatever you're drinking. That is, that's dark, that's smooth, that's, that's delicious. And that's what you just picked up from the market too, which yeah. is the roux. The roux. And you just kind of, you just let Lizard, that kind of yeah? simmer in there, that lemony aroma. <laughs> Yeah, with that salt and then that roux, it does like it does sort of cut the bitterness. Yeah, it's it, it lowers the bitterness a little bit and the acidity. Oh, yeah. Something that you should know is that coffee in Ethiopia is called buna. <laughs> Was that correct? Oh yeah. <laughs> Was that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Where are we heading next? We are going to. Um, uh, area called Gerji, okay. where I live around, and uh, we're gonna have um, one of the best chickpeas. Ah, uh, is it Shiro? Yeah. Shiro. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Shiro is, it's one of the greatest Ethiopian dishes. I ordered the chickpeas too, and I've ordered also tomato, but with uh, spice awesome. in it. Awesome. A small little shiro spot and right now she's just stir-frying up some of the injera with some tomato sauce and you can smell the, the spices in there there's chilies in there you can really smell the rosemary it just smells unbelievably good <laughs> wow. I think they're getting ready to make the shiro onion and that's the butter no it's uh, oil. oil okay First puts that clay pot onto the charcoal. Um, then she added in a paste, which I think is some, some uh, onions and then some oil. Oh, here comes the chickpea flour. Okay. 
see how quick it is. Yeah. Um, and there's a little bit of spice mixed into that chickpea flour already, so you can smell a, like a little bit of turmeric, maybe a little bit of a little bit of a spice basil. blend. There's a little bit of berber in there, basil and just a little bit, and basil. Yeah. Oh wow! Oh. Oh, as soon as you got our, our plate of injera. Oh, and there it is. Wow, that smells so good. Okay, cool. So they are coming to eat together. Shiro, just some other shiro. Mm -hmm. oh. That is, yeah, that's just sensational. It's so smooth. It's almost like sticky, like peanut butter. You can taste the garlic. It's just hot and bubbly. That's that's insane. And yeah, the, the chickpeas have create that like pasty consistency. Next up for some of the fir fir which is the, the sauteed, stir-fried, in like like drenched in spices and tomato sauce, injera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can taste the rosemary in there, which was simmered down. Oh, that's good. It's just like saturated with spice and flavor. Mm. Oh. That's shiro. That's just insane. Yeah. That's like that's like comfort food. It's so soothing. Um, it's vegetarian. Yeah, it's sensationally delicious. I'm a saginaldo. That was by far the best shiro I've ever had. I, I mean, going to the market this morning, seeing all the spices and then seeing all the ingredients and then watching her prepare it and make it right there in front of us before we ate it, that was, uh, that added to the beauty of that shiro. It was, it's spectacular. Micah and Ying didn't join us for the, the market tour because it was early and hectic, yeah, but they've yeah, joined yeah. us now and we're on our way to go eat some fish. <sighs> this is called Ambo. This is the Ethiopian sparkling water. This is my second beverage of choice in Ethiopia after coffee. That's the fish. Oh, really? You could oh, get you the can... whole fried as well. You will get that as well. <laughs> This one looks unbelievably good. They have a bed of injera, and then it is uh, fish sliced off the bone, so the fillets, and then it's kind of simmered with the, some of the spices. There's berbera in yes. there for sure. You can smell it, and tomato. Uh, there's some rosemary in there. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And something that Desi told me is that in Ethiopia, there's no, you know, tilapia, can be farmed very easily, but the quality goes way down. There's no farm tilapia. It's all fresh, it's all wild tilapia. Mm. And with the addition of that, that chili paste, that chili sauce, oh man. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. Well, thank you. This is the fried fish you gotta squeeze on some lime. And it's they've kind of like checker cut it uh, so that it gets like perfectly deep fried and crunchy. I'll try. Wow, yeah, that's crisp. I will dip that into the, the chili. Oh, it's fried so hot and fresh. And there's a little bit of a, like fenugreek or something. They, they wash it with fenugreek mm. first. Mm. They wash it fenugreek, put that's some wheat flour and dip fry it. Almost like a rye flavor. Both versions of the fish are delicious, but the, the more unique version is the one that, that, that's cooked with the spices. 
He's gonna make the juice here. A little shop. Uh, he has some food products, but then he also has some fresh fruits outside. Uh, but this is where he's gonna make us a, a fresh juice and hopefully the Laird, the Laird juice, Ethiopian Laird juice, which is, it, it's awesome. Avocado, the green one. There is a strawberry. This is a mango, papaya. Uh, orange and uh, pineapple. It might actually be too thick for for a straw, so I'm gonna go in with a spoon first. Avocado, and I think that looks like kind of mango or orange on the top. Oh, I got some strawberry too, though. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That is unbelievably good. The avocado is so creamy and so thick. And actually, Ethiopia is where I learned to really like avocado as a drink or as a shake or as like a sweet drink rather than a savory fruit. That would be spreadable. It's so thick. Yeah. It's just the most all natural fruit shake you could possibly have. Man, it's starting to rain again uh, for the second or third time today. Uh, so it is a perfect time to have some more coffee. Not only is coffee so popular in Ethiopia, but there's a whole ceremony that surrounds coffee because of its importance, its significance in Ethiopian culture. So she's gonna roast the coffee. You can see she's she just poured in the green beans. Oh, it's starting to smoke and smell really good. Roasted separately and uh, mixed up. As we're waiting for the coffee to, to roast, uh, we're snacking on some puffed barley and some peanuts, and this is a snack that you often eat. Or also popcorn is popular more modern style. Yeah, great crunchy snack. And Jesse was telling me a lot of people don't want to drink coffee unless they smell the aroma. So it's important to smell the smoke. That smells so good. That's the front kitchen she's running. Okay. Next up, she's burning the frankincense, which is also important for a coffee ceremony, Ethiopian coffee ceremony, and you can smell that it's a beautiful aroma. Uh, but in frankincense, it, it's a sap that comes from a tree. started downpouring outside, but this is the perfect coffee drinking time. Um, and again, we have it with rue, uh, which is that herb. Oh, it's so good. Oh, that's so smooth, that's so strong, that's just perfectly, lightly acidic. Oh, it's, it's awesome. I've had coffee with salt today, I've had coffee plain, um, and another ingredient you can add is black cumin oil, which is something I've never seen or tasted before and it's medicinal. Oh wow. Oh that's delicious. That's it does have a almost more of like a vanilla y let me let me taste that again. It almost has a like like a pungent clove taste to it. Coffee was spectacular as usual, but having the whole ceremony, that elevates the coffee, Ethiopian coffee experience. And we're on our way to the next restaurant. It's, it's called Grand, and this is a special restaurant because I actually ate here on my previous trip to Addis Ababa, but I got the recommendation from Go Addis. Um, and they said this place is amazing, so I already know this place is amazing. We're gonna stop here, especially the ET, eat the Bayanetu, which is uh, the mixed vegan vegetarian platter. And when you order a mixed plate vegetarian like this, it's called Bayanet. Bayanetu. 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 Yes. We gotta try that shiro first because it's hot and fresh right out of the pan. Oh. Yeah. Shiro never gets old. Mm. Oh, and you can taste it with the chili. So hot. Chili. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it is. The chili kind of goes up your nose a little yeah. bit. Mm. And something that I really love here is the tomato salad. 
No, the chili is spicy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh man, the tomato salad is awesome though because you've got the juicy tomatoes. And then I think it is lime juice. Yep. And nice and salty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get these green peppers and they're not too spicy. Sometimes they're yeah. very spicy, right? Depending it on depends the season. On the, it's like sunflower soaked injera. Yeah. And you also pick it up with injera. Oh, you can see how like milky it is. Oh yeah, you can see that, that milkiness. But the sunflower makes it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is really juicy. It's milky. Yeah. It's milky, but that's all coming from sunflower. Yeah. This chili is really spicy. It's making us both like <laughs> our noses are running from this chili. <laughs> the woman is very good here. Oh yeah. Uh, we got one more main restaurant to eat at on this ultimate Ethiopian food tour. We're gonna eat some meat. This place is called Yilma, and it's one of the, the most well-known butchery meat restaurants in Addis Ababa. It's the best place for raw meat in the entire city. It oh, is, yeah. One of the common dishes to eat here is raw beef. So he, he, I mean, he sharpens the knife. He carefully slices a couple of delicate chunks uh, that just like pure red color with some fat and different different parts of the cow onto a plate. Uh, we're gonna eat that. It smells like clean, natural beef, which it is. Uh, what do you want to drink? Sparkling water? Sparkling water? Sparkling water? We're sitting down for the grand finale of this Ethiopian food tour, ultimate Ethiopian food tour. Uh, Desi was explaining to me that Yilma, they have their own farm, so they raise their own cows. Uh, this is some of the freshest, best quality beef you can get. So that the knife comes between your... Yeah. So, take a piece like this. First the ch chilies, mustard. Okay, Actually, it tastes like sashimi, sushi. Yeah, very fresh. You take a piece of injera mm -hmm. um, and then you grab a chunk of the red meat. You wrap it in there like that. You dip in the chili, chili? then the mustard, and then the, the other chili. You want some? And you can see that raw, raw meat shimmering underneath there. That is a totally new way of eating a steak. It's so fresh that you don't even taste like the meat. It doesn't even taste raw, pure meat. Mm. And then with that spice, the mustard tastes really good. You can see this one is not quite as red. Chili, the mustard. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Well, that one has a little more of a, like a, a crunch to it almost. Mm. That's the muscle. Mm. Now we're gonna see the fried one. Yeah. Okay. He's having, having coffee too. <laughs> yes. So that's um. Yes, yes. Get out. <laughs> So eat it the same way. Yeah. Chunk of that meat. I want some of that onion as well. Dip it into the the trio. The raw one is really good because it's almost like it's just pure. Whereas the cooked one has a little more of a crunchy edge to it, and it's a little more tender. I think real quality, great tasting beef. The cooked one is it's, it's, it's awesome. So that's the end of this Ethiopian food tour and uh, that was some serious meat at the end. Uh, the raw meat was amazing. It's so good. And I want to say a huge thank you to Go Addis for taking me on this tour and to Bray and Desi. Yeah, I'll have their link in the description box below but they offer some off the beaten path local food tours um, as well as the market tour that we did in the morning. But it was, it was fantastic. I, I fully enjoyed it. And I didn't, I, I, I didn't pay for this tour uh, but the, the words in this video is my own opinion and 
Yeah, it was fantastic. I'm very full. I'm ready to go home and take a nap. So I'm gonna end the video right now. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now and also click that little bell icon. That way you'll get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. See you on the next video.